everyone, and welcome to Inside ADGI. My name is Rebecca Matter, and I am joined today by my one of my partners, Pam Foster. Hi, Pam. Hi, everybody. Heather Robson. Hi, Heather. Hello, everyone. And the infamous Nick Osborne. Hello, Nick. <laughs> Always the dramatic introduction. Hello. <laughs> have to it has to be so we are here today it's something i'm super excited about i've been with adi for over 16 years i've been in the industry for over 20 and it's mind-blowing how much this industry has changed and how many opportunities from when i first started and we were heavy in direct mail and then i met nick and he showed me the world of the web and then we got into social media and then we got into seo and yet there are still, this day, dozens of different projects for writers. There are still new projects coming. And so I'm super excited about this session because new is always fun. And I love to be in on it at the ground floor at the beginning. And so today we're going to talk about these three emerging hot opportunities for freelance writers in the industry that are already here, but not a lot of people know about them and not a lot of people are doing anything with it. And it's just going to get a whole lot bigger. So real quick, let's go through our plan for today before we kick things off. We'll go through the three emerging opportunities. And so each of our guests will cover one specific opportunity. We'll go over who uses them and how they work. We'll talk about why companies need these projects now, how to seize the opportunity. And then as always, we'll open it up for a Q&A, whatever questions you have. I would also like though, as we're going, so Heather's gonna kick us off in a minute. When she's covering her opportunity, if you have questions about her opportunity, I'd like for you to post them right away. She will be leaving a little bit early from the session to go into one of our certifications that we're running right now on SEO. So we need to get our answers from her. But also, I thought it would be a great format. Usually, we do Q&A at the end. But to go ahead and queue up the questions about her opportunity and then ask them. And then Pam's opportunity and then Nick's opportunity. And then we'll open up for a more general Q&A at the end and answer any questions you have. No questions too big. No questions too small. We got the answers for you. So real quick, just who our guests are if you're brand new to ADBI World. This is Heather Robinson. She's my managing editor of Wealthy Web Writer, uh, has spent 20 years of web, web and content marketing experience. She's a successful published fiction author and is passionate about speaking, which shows every time she speaks. Teaching, she's become one of our favorite and most wonderful teachers and writing about copywriting content and user experience, otherwise known as UX. And she is a very popular instructor for several ADBI programs. If you go through Nick's apprenticeship or many of our certifications, you will find Heather keeping it all together and making sure that everybody is successful with the program. So welcome, Heather. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited always to talk about user experience stuff. Excellent. And then next up, Nick. If you don't know Nick, <laughs> you have, must have not been around for a while. Nick was one of my, he's a, a good friend and colleague of mine and one of my first expert conquers at AWI. I came on to join this company to help them really move into the future to get away from just direct mail. I said, guys, there's a bigger opportunity over here. And this guy actually knows what it's all about. It took me a two years to chase him down and get him to believe in me <laughs> and AWI that I knew what I could do for him. And he finally joined on and it's been awesome ever since. He is the guy when I sought out, when I set out to find the guy who could get us into the web copywriting space, I came across this guy. This is the pioneer who created this online copywriting opportunity for you. 40 years of experience in the marketing industry, literally wrote the first book on this topic. He was the one who told companies the web is different, made a huge, brave, brave move and went all in on online and has just become the best in the space, but also such an amazing teacher an advocate for writers who are following in his footsteps to join him in this space. He's the one who brought us into the social media world when that thing took over. And now he's bringing us into a brand new world. And I'm very excited <laughs> for him to be here today as well. So thank you, Nick, for being here. You're welcome. We are, we are recording this, right? Because I've, I've, never, I've, I've never heard you say such nice things about me for so long. It was amazing. <laughs> thank you thank you for the introduction you can just put it like on a little Perfect. wheel whenever you're feeling a little that's bit right I'm feeling bad I'll put, it, I'll put it on a loop <laughs> Nick is great Nick is great Nick is great yes. <laughs> all right so with that Heather I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away and Pam will be running your slides we'll go ahead and go off camera for now and you can stay on or go off whichever you prefer 
All right. Well, hello, everybody, and I hope that you are all excited today. I am always excited to talk, to talk about UX copywriting, which is a growing opportunity. Um, and one of the first things I just kind of like to touch on is you'll hear uh, two different terms. You'll hear UX writing and you'll hear UX copywriting. They're both really important to conversions and they are both very good opportunities. We're going to focus more on UX copywriting. So UX writing is anything that kind of goes to the, the function of how a website works. So error messages and um, like uh, autoresponder emails, um, those kind of things, anything that helps a user use the site. UX copywriting goes more to the actual messaging itself. So things like the copy that's appearing on the homepage, the copy that you're sending out through emails, uh, content, all of that good stuff. It's all about making a site user friendly um, and removing barriers. And it has a tremendous impact on the success of any company that is taking this approach. <clears throat> so one of the questions that I get a lot is how do clients use UX copywriting? Um, I'm gonna... <clears throat> so clients do a lot with UX copywriting. Um, it really brings the user experience to the forefront of digital marketing. And so it's a great way to um, increase the clarity of what users are doing. It really focuses on being transparent. That's one of the um, kind of the key factors of user experience copywriting. And it's all about removing barriers and just making things super easy uh, for your customers, for your clients and for their customers to <laughs> move from one step to the next step to the next step um, to the next step. And companies that really go all in and make user experience kind of like the core of everything that they do, they see just absolutely tremendous results. Over a 10 year study, uh, companies that were embracing user experience actually performed 200% better uh, than companies that were less, uh, less all in on that. So user experience copywriting, one of the things that a lot of people ask about is, how is my client gonna use this? Where will I be writing this as a copywriter? Um, and the truth is one of the things that I really love about user experience copywriting um, is that it touches everything. Anytime that you are communicating with a user, that is an opportunity to bring in the user experience to make um, what the customer is feeling about the company, how they are able to move forward to make that all go better. Uh, so user experience is absolutely essential to writing for mobile websites. Like you can't really do mobile well without leading with user experience. Uh, but it also has a really big impact on email. Um, it's important for social media. It is something that web content needs pretty much everywhere on the site. Um, E-commerce sites that even just go through and do like the most basic of UX writing often see about a 35 increase in the purchases that they get. Um, and it's also really important for um, retention efforts. Um, so that's going to go back to content marketing. That's going to uh, touch on email newsletters. So pretty much if you already kind of have a specialty in mind, like you're thinking, hey, I'd like to be writing web content, or hey, I'd really love to write social, uh, social media stuff, or email is absolutely what I'm into, you can actually dramatically increase your value, your fees, and also increase the results that you're providing for your customer uh, by focusing in on the user experience. Now, I can't underscore enough how much this is going to be a factor in the future. Uh, so the entire digital landscape is really shifting toward leading everything with user experience. Um, and a lot of companies are very much already on board um, with user experience writing. Um, again, that's the writing that goes to the functional use of the website. But more and more companies are starting to realize it's not just the function of the website, it's everything. We need to be leading with user experience when it comes to our messaging too. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that a lot of companies are, uh, or a lot of market research is starting to indicate that sometime within this year or the next year, the user experience is actually gonna be the key differentiating factor between whether somebody chooses to buy from company A 
or chooses to buy from company B. Um, and it's also going to be the differentiating factor in whether they keep buying from company A or they kind of say, you know, company A is not really floating my boat anymore. I'm going to go try company B. Uh, so this really is going to be um, it's going to be something that everybody is looking for. Uh, and it touches everything. Google um, SEO rankings are really all about the user experience. That's what Google is looking for. They're looking for websites that deliver on the user experience when somebody clicks through on a search return. Um, and I've even heard uh, Russ Henneberry, who runs our search engine marketing certification program, say that really these days, search engine optimization is more about UX optimization. Uh, Amazon was built entirely on user experience. And I actually have a really fun story um, about Amazon that really, really reveals how powerful this is and how powerful you are. So the one thing I want you to keep in mind is that smart companies are starting to realize we need writers who understand user experience. We need writers who understand how user experience affects the messages, and we need writers who can help us make the shift so that we are leading with that. All right, so I told you I had a fun story about Amazon. How would you like to change one word in copy and earn your client $300 million over the next year? <laughs> Just one word. Um, and that actually happened for Amazon. Um, early on in Amazon's days, they had a button on their site. And when you were going to make a purchase, the button that you would uh, click on was a register button. And somebody thought, you know, what happens if we change the word on that button? What happens if we change the word on that button to continue? Now, there's actually more going on in the background here. It wasn't just a simple shift of, hey, instead of say register, let's say continue. There was a lot of research in understanding what was happening inside the minds of the users at that moment. And it turned out users were very frustrated. They wanted to make purchases. They wanted to spend their money with Amazon. But when they saw that word register, it wasn't the next step that they wanted to take. They just wanted to buy the product. And instead, Amazon was putting up a barrier saying you can buy this product, but only after you register with us. And they were losing about 45% of their sales, people that would have bought if they just didn't have to register. So they changed the process. They changed that register button to continue and then when you hit that button, you could place your order and have the option to register when you did. And this simple shift made, like I said, a $300 million difference for Amazon over the course of the year after that change was made. <laughs> the thing was, all this stuff in the background is great, but it was really all about getting them to click that button. And just the shift of register to continue resulted in so many more clicks of that button and so many more purchases that it made that dramatic difference. Now, just think about that. Think about being that writer who thinks, okay, how are we gonna help? How are we gonna take this barrier down and help our people make, take the next step? And you change one word and you end up with $300 million more in the bottom line. It's incredible. Your words are so powerful. You can make such a difference with your clients. <clears throat> so how can you get ahead of the curve on this? Um, the things to start thinking about as you're doing your writing, are to focus on making everything really, really clear. Like you always want your reader to know exactly where they're going next. And that means using what we call signposts in your writing, kind of letting them know. And next you're gonna learn about. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but first, those kinds of things. Uh, transparency is essential um, to user experience copywriting. You, uh, it's all about um, just being very open and honest with what you're hoping uh, to provide for your reader and also hoping, uh, also being very honest about what action you're hoping to see from your reader. And then there is a lot of anticipation that goes into UX writing, UX copywriting particularly. Um, you're never just writing in a vacuum. As a UX writer, you're always aware of where your reader is coming from and you're aware of where they're going. And so you wanna have that empathy. You wanna understand their mindset. You wanna stand there, um, understand their emotion. And then you wanna help them follow a clear path. Um, and all the while, because you're being so transparent, you are really showing credibility, you're proving your claims, and you're deepening trust, and you're helping them to really just like you and the business that you're representing. Um, and that helps them make purchases. And of course, the question always comes up, what can you earn? Um, and UX gets a little bit complicated on this front. I mean, clients are clamoring for better UX. Obviously, their customers are demanding it. It's going to become the differentiating factor in whether or not they make a purchase. 
and your words have immense power and value. But like I mentioned, UX copywriting touches pretty much every project that you can imagine. Uh, you could bring UX copywriting to writing emails. You could bring it to writing web pages, uh, social media, white papers, case studies. All of that can benefit from UX. Um, and so it's a little bit like uh, when people started recognizing that search engine optimization copywriting was a thing that they needed, they would pay about 50 to 100% more per project if somebody could optimize it for search. And that's what you're going to see right now is that people are going to be willing to pay a premium 50 to 100% more per project if you come in and help them optimize it for the user experience. There are specialized services too. A couple examples, you could do a UX audit of a website and depending on the website, um, that could actually be a very big project that you go through. Um, or you could write a style guide. That's a very user uh, focused pr uh, project that a lot of companies are starting to recognize the need for. And those types of projects will tend to run between uh, $5,000 and $10,000 or even more if it gets to be bigger than that. Um, so I hope this gives you a quick overview of UX and uh, to learn more, you can watch our State of the Industry Summit where I talk even more about it. Um, and we've got a couple of other resources and then really exciting coming up a little bit later in this year, I am actually going to be uh, certifying writers in UX copywriting. So I'm very excited about that. All right, so Rebecca, do we have any questions coming in? Uh, first, a comment. Uh, it sounds as if you're describing outstanding, insightful customer service delivered through the words you write instead of the words you say in a phone conversation or in person. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really insightful because user experience and customer experience are uh, really linked. And there is a huge opportunity for writers to work um, rather on the marketing side, you can bring your UX copywriting to the fulfillment side where you are helping customer service representatives uh, figure out what you're saying, where you're writing copy on websites that are meant to boost um, retention, and where you're also writing follow-up series of email messages to people who have made a purchase um, in order to help make sure that they're getting the most out of that purchase and that they're also seeing things that they could buy that would help, um, that they might also be interested in. It's interesting. We've been focusing a lot on user experience, thanks to Heather, over the last year at ADBI. And what I love about it from a business leadership standpoint is it always starts with how do we make things easier for the, the member in our world. And so it's just been so fun to get the whole company to rally behind this idea of UX. And now the copy needs, it's, it's increased the copy needs by a lot, which is not as easy on our production team, but they love it because we're seeing it. We're seeing more success stories come out of things like our launch party was yes. a, a perfect example of taking a product and building an amazing user experience from the time someone signed up to going through it to following up after. And we've had more success come out of that program in a short amount of time than anything. It's been awesome. So the fact that you can go to your clients and say, I'm going to make this even better for your customers, which is going to make a better relationship with you. And it's, it's really a eye opening thing. Yeah. Uh, Tim Geiger says, ooh, UX copywriting certification. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> so he's excited. Carol Fine. wants to know when are we going to have it. I said just coming soon, probably in August is when we'll be ready to announce it. Uh, we have a very grueling certification process that our experts have to go through to create these certifications. We don't mm -hmm. take them lightly. They're big, intensive things. And you do take a test at the end. And so all of that gets built out. But Heather has been working with our team, and we're super excited for this one. It's um, going to be Oh, so you, Carlin wants to know, is this a separate service or an add-on service? So if you are talking the user experience to your clients. Um, I honestly, if I were making a recommendation, I would suggest that you specialize in user experience copywriting if it is of interest to you. Um, and then I would make it core to your services. So I wouldn't really do it as an add-on. I personally would only take on projects with clients who were ready to embrace the user experience and move forward the, with that because you're just going to deliver such a much more dramatic result. Uh, now that's me speaking from where I'm at. And if you are just starting getting started, it is something that you could approach as an add-on. Like if you have a client that just isn't quite clicking on, um, what the real value of it is, you can just say, okay, you know, we, we won't worry so much about you know, going through all the steps to make sure that everything is user experience optimized. I will just write your copy for you. Uh, so you could approach it that way, but I would encourage you to keep in mind that you would want to shift 
more into being a user experience copywriter, much like uh, Heather Lloyd Martin is an SEO copywriter. You would not hire Heather Lloyd Martin to write copy that isn't SEO optimized. Um, and so eventually you would not want people to hire you to write copy that isn't UX optimized. That's what you would do if you embrace this as a specialty, which I hope you will. I think the cool thing too is that over the next year, it's such an unknown thing. Nobody is out there being certified. So this first round of people who walk through saying I'm a certified UX copywriter are going to have a much uh, easier entry point. Mm -hmm. Every client, it's immediately going to uh, increase the value. So mm -hmm. as a client who hires a lot of copywriters, I agree with Heather. I wouldn't at this point do an add-on per se, because if you have the skill set, you should just tell me that you have it. And that's what sets you apart from every other copywriter who, might, who I might be talking to is, not only do I write copy and content that converts, I write it in a way that gives your user a better user experience that will improve everything from the moment that they meet you all the way through. I will look at all the copy and make sure that it's a great experience, which is only going to benefit you and them even more downstream. I'm immediately going to assume as the client that you're worth more than the client who didn't say that. So even if you just work that into the way that you are selling the value of your proposal, it's immediately going to make me think this person's worth a lot more because what the co even if I get the same copy from both people, their copy is going to be a higher elevated user experience. The other thing I would do is it's a great way of like limping in <laughs> to a company. So instead of coming in and saying, hey, I want to write a sales letter, I want to write your website, whatever it is, you could come in. This is something I learned from Nick a long time ago in the website of things. You simply ask, what would it mean if this page worked better? What would it mean if this converted higher? What would it mean if the experience you remember was better? You know, these, this is what your purpose of your business. You're driving all these people to this thing. I can make it better simply by approaching it from the member's experience. And that alone, you could limp in and never have to even write any copy and just improve upon somebody else's copy that they've already written. So it's just a great soft way of adding a service that, while I wouldn't have do it as an add-on to my own writing, I would use it to sell the value. I could use user experience to get my foot in the door with a mm -hmm. client to improve something that's already there. Good point. Um, as copywriters, shouldn't we keep, shouldn't we all keep UX and SEO in mind when we are writing clients copy? We're definitely shifting in that direction. Like I, I would say probably within two years, if you aren't able to fluently discuss user experience when you're talking with a client, you're going to be back on your heels a little bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, we should always be user focused, user centric. Um, and uh, with user experience copywriting, we're being a little bit more um, transparent and sometimes a little bit less artful than we may have been in the past. I mean, we're just kind of saying, you know, here's what we are trying to accomplish for you as our user. So there are some uh, definite differences between taking a user experience approach and a more traditional approach. But like I said, things are shifting this way and eventually this will just be the more traditional approach. Uh, Steven saying, when you have individuals that are later certified, will there be a place on anybody to contact them to do work for our clients? That's a great idea, having a certified section of our website. So I put that on the list and it's in my comments. But one thing I just want to mention, in all programs that you learn from ADY, it's what we call the ADY method, there's always the client getting piece of it. So nothing ever ends with saying you have this skill, here's how you use it to make money. So in every certification and every training, we're always going to talk about, here's now how you use it to get clients. So we will be covering that in the certification as well. Mm -hmm. um, all these links will be accessible. You guys will get the playbacks. So you'll have the links, um, all these slides will have clickable links. So if you see anything that you want, just know you're going to get it. Uh, Monday. So that's good. Um, and then Heather, someone's asking for an example of UX for someone to walk through, like this is a better experience. Can mm -hmm. you make a, a note to do like a writer's life article or something in the next yeah. couple of months or a video, like a tutorial where we walk them through? So Carly, yeah. that's a great idea. And we'll put that on the list and get something together for you. For everybody, because I think everybody would like to do that. Happy to do that. I actually did a, uh, over on Wealthy Web Writer recently, I did a, a UX training just kind of on the essential core elements of yeah. uh, UX. And that's one of the things that I did. I just went out on the web and found some copy that I thought was lacking in a user focus. Um, and I took all the writers on that call through how I would take existing copy and update it to be user focused. So that, that's a good idea. And that's definitely uh, a fun process to go through. All right. Um, 
Last question, if you're doing SEO copywriting and tack on UX copywriting, how do you merge them? Would it be UX SEO copywriting? <laughs> um, like I said, uh, I, we were having a talk with um, Russ in our SEO copywriting mastery program, and um, he, you know, everything about SEO is moving toward the user experience. So they're just, I don't know how you, I mean, they're very naturally linked and Part of user experience is making sure things are accessible, which means doing good SEO. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily try to title yourself as a SEO UX copywriter. I would either say that you're an SEO copywriter who understands UX, or I would say that you are a UX copywriter who understands search engine optimization and has those skills too. So just I'm going to fire through these real quick so we can get over to pan session and get Heather yeah. off to her certification. She's working with Russ on the SEO certification. Uh, you mentioned do UX if you're interested in it. How would we know if we're interested? We'll have more about it this summer. As we get closer to launching the certification, we'll, we'll create lots of content for you so that you can see uh, what the examples look like, understand the projects, and really get a this, – this session today is more to give you the, the top-level 30,000-foot view of what's coming. And then we will definitely get into that as we get closer so that you can make that decision for yourself. Yeah. Um, will SEO and UX become one and the same? No. If you think about the goal of SEO, SEO's job is to provide relevant content to people that are searching for things. So that is a skill set in and of itself that's really valuable and necessary for all writers these days because you want – it's organic traffic, people looking for a solution that you're writing copy for, you want to attract them to the page. Once they get to the page though, what is that experience when they get there? Are they where they thought they were going to go? Does it still seem relevant? Do they feel like they want to keep moving forward? That would be the UX side of things. So they'll actually work hand in hand. And then does AWI provide a client list? There are millions and millions and millions of companies in the US. So what we do at AWI is we show you how to pick your focus niche, what industry niche, We'll give you some links at the end, actually, to other sessions that we've done through Insight ADBI. There's 26 plus ways to get clients. And so we actually have a session where we go all the way through them and we show you how to market yourself so that you're in control of your writing business, writing about things that you want to write about for people that you want to write for in industries where we know the money is there and that they value copywriters. So that's a whole other lesson, but we do have lots of training on that for free that we can give to you and really show you how that, that whole thing works, demystify all that for you. Okay, Heather, you are clear for takeoff. All awesome. right, thanks everybody, have fun. And thank you so much for joining us today. And Pam, we're gonna take it over to you for our next opportunity. All righty, hopefully you guys can hear me, let me know. Again. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I'm gonna talk about video scripts and you may be thinking, I'm sorry, what? Video isn't new, that's been around forever. But here's the deal. Video now is a must. It used to be kind of an option and some companies really focused on it, but a lot of them ignored it. I'm sorry, now video is a must. And we're seeing in research all over the place, HubSpot is a great place for research on these things. 85% um, of businesses use video marketing. My question is who's writing all those scripts, right? 92% of surveyed marketers know that video is important to their marketing channels, their mix. 99% of current video marketers will continue using video this year, and 95% plan to increase or maintain spending on video. And YouTube and Facebook are the most widely used at 85% and 79% among the surveyed uh, marketers, but LinkedIn is growing, LinkedIn video. Who'd have thought, right? So an example over here on the right is just in the dog grooming world alone, there are millions of videos. I don't know about millions, but there are thousands and thousands of videos on just how to do dog grooming and use materials and supplies that help you do that. And guess what? Those videos are promoting the supplies or the training programs or whatever it is. It's not just a, here you go, happy helper. <laughs> it's, it's tied to commerce. So this one here at the bottom, how to use clippers when grooming, who's selling those clippers? It might be a video from someone selling a clipper package for uh, people to do their grooming at home. So video is exploding and popular more than ever now because so many people are watching video. Um, more stats to throw at you, but it just proves how strong this is. 88% of marketers say video provides a positive return on their investment. Um, and 85% of U.S. internet 
users watch video content. I know I do on my phone, right? You're browsing through Facebook and you see a cute dog video or cool how to make um, face mask video, whatever it is, you'll stop and watch it, right? And by 2021, according to Single Grain, a survey they did, the average person will spend 100 minutes every day, think about that, watching online video. That's a 19% increase from a year ago. So this is just an example from the MoMA, the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York City design store. They have a little video on a modern, cool coffee maker. Nick, I'm talking to you, Mr. CoffeeDetective.com. <laughs> Nick, Nick has a website all about coffee. But I just happened to notice this in my Facebook feed the other day, a really cool little video on this um, Terra Cafe uh, coffee maker espresso machine to be exact, but it was a neat video that caught my eye. And that's what companies who are really clever and smart are doing. And somebody has to write the video script. Somebody wrote the copy for this little ad here. It's all tied together now. So who's using video? What kinds of companies? Well, I would say global companies like Starbucks or um, the Museum of Art reaches a global audience. National companies that are just U.S. or Canada-based or somewhere. Regional, like for example, if you have a regional heating oil company or something, you may do videos on how to keep your oil burner humming or your, um, your heating costs down. Um, and local businesses, for sure, can use video to bring in local customers. I've got examples here in a variety of niche industries, Business to business, business to consumer. We've got Benefit Cosmetics on the right doing tons of makeup how-tos. And, of course, they all feature their products, right? Uh, the Mint.com online money management system uses really simple what we call explainer videos, which are really helpful to um, bring people to engage, build awareness, and bring people on board to signing up for Mint. Um, the one way over on the left is a business to business one. It's a company called Lucid Works and they help uh, companies establish machine learning, um, which is a very sophisticated learning method of um, uh, technology. So for example, in the veterinary industry, there's machine learning, automated learning for veterinarians to learn uh, different procedures for animals. And then in the middle, we've got a local pizza chain who delivered uh, 1,400 pizzas to a healthcare company, and they just talked about why they did that. And it gave them local credibility, and some things like this went viral. So basically, everyone, anyone, any type of company should be doing video. There are so many platforms now to produce your videos and to put them out there, but video is only good if there's a good script. If it's boring or all about how great we are and that kind of thing, eh, not going to work so well. So four big reasons company use video, companies use video is, uh, are these. Generate awareness, so they grab attention. I didn't even know there was a cool Terra Cafe coffee maker until it grabbed my attention, right? That's awareness. And then you want to prompt involvement. So if a video is just great and you know some people who uh, could benefit from it, you're going to share it, right? So companies are looking to build video that will prompt those shares. Um, educate people. And we also have a phrase in the industry called edutainment. So you're educating while being very entertaining so people will stick around and watch what you have to say. Um, Rand Fishkin over here on the Moz Whiteboard Friday um, that is a marketing, um, a, a brilliant guy in the search marketing world and online marketing world who teaches every Friday a different tactic to help companies understand how to use SEO, how to build links, how to do all kinds of things, how to deal with mobile. And he is, he's been doing this for a long time. He's one of the leaders in that. But who's to say you couldn't do that? So here's an example I've written in the veterinary industry for years and the pet industry. I could go ahead and create veterinary marketing whiteboard Friday or something like that that's very niche focused. And wouldn't that bring in some clients to me if I was still really wanting to do that full time? Absolutely. So the ultimate goal is to stand apart from competition and sell products, bring buyers to you. And that's really the main mission, all those four combined for companies to embrace with your help. 
So uh, the top 12 effective video formats, again, I did a lot of research here to make sure that you understand all the opportunity. So let's say right now we're doing a webinar, right? So we're going to record this. That'll be a video that we're going to put on our website. And anyone, you guys included, but anyone after the fact can watch that video and learn from it. As a matter of fact, our Inside AWA video, videos have been around for a long time, and we also have them on YouTube, and we just keep growing that audience. Presentations, um, somebody might want to do an official presentation on um, a new product that they're coming out with, and they want to do a walkthrough of how it works, new software. Like Zoom, for example, might do a presentation on the new security issues that they've, uh, or security measures they've taken to make Zoom more secure. Then there also might be a tutorial or a how-to. That's very common. If you go to a website and like you're, you're trying to do a WordPress website on your own, think of all the tutorials that have um, walkthroughs on how to upload photos, how to do this, how to do that. Product demonstrations and reviews are great. Oh my gosh, if you go to YouTube and you type in a review of this camera, you're going to see all kinds of videos where people unbox the camera, show you how, it's, how to set it up, show you how it works, show you why it's great. Testimonial videos are huge where people are um, talking on behalf of the company. Like I'm a customer of so-and-so and they changed my life because I was able to streamline my business or whatever it is. Those are popular. Then we have video blogs where someone is creating a video on a regular basis and, and uh, keeping up with timely posts. That's more like a blog approach. Interviews and Q&As. We could interview an expert like Nick and take an hour with him and talk about um, specific topics of writing for the web. That's popular. Animations and explainer videos. Um, an example was that Mint video I showed you, but a lot of companies use very simple explainer videos to help people understand why they need a certain service or product and how it works. Brand films is another one. Oh, I skip live streaming like we're doing right now. That's another video purpose, and you need to plan that out. It's not just willy-nilly. You can help companies really plan that out with good messages and points to cover. Brand films are, I've seen some for like uh, beer companies. They'll do a really cool brand film to get, you know, bring in viewers and, and promote their beer. Video emails. You might get an email with an embedded video. That's another version. And then video ads, which I've seen, you know, you've seen on Facebook all the time and, and other places. And also we have video sales letters, which are long videos, sometimes even 45 minutes or so that are working like gangbusters for certain markets. So whew, talk about opportunity, right? Now you, for all of those different uses of video, can go to a company and say, I can write scripts that work really well for you. And I have knowledge of persuasive writing techniques, knowing the audience, speaking their language, solving their problem through a video, and then leading that viewer to action, to sign up for something, to buy something, to download something, to uh, uh, sign up for a newsletter. There's all kinds. And you can also say, I can create entertaining videos that educate, but also entertain so you're not boring people to death. I also can help set your company apart with great video. And I will, for sure, with my skills, help you increase awareness, leads, and sales. This is just an example of a video script for a company, a software company. That's the kind of thing you can write for clients. It's, it's uh, you know, they don't know how to write video, believe me. For, <laughs> they don't know how to write a lot of stuff, which is why they need us copywriters. Now, what can you earn with video scripts? Well, the short ones, which would be like one to five minutes, would probably be about 500 to 1500 per script, but it could be more depending on, on a lot of factors such as, you know, are you trying to win over um, giant corporations to a different kind of software? That could be huge for the business, so they may pay you more for those. And then long form video sales letters, which I talked about, more like direct response type, could be $5,000 and up per project. Um, we have a state of the industry report on copywriter rates here. It's free for you. And there's a whole section on how companies are using video today. And so that's a great resource for you to get into how that all works even more. So that link will be there on your slides. 
But to learn more, we have some articles, eight winning strategies for writing attention, grabbing video scripts. And then we have Andrew Davis, who is a video, I don't even know what to call him, a phenom. He's so entertaining while educating, just brilliant. He um, has a presentation on how to do great video testimonials. That's a marketing profs link there. We're very friendly with marketing profs. And finally, big news, we're going to be having a video certification, video script writing certification with Andrew Davis. And that's him there with his bow tie. He's known for the bow tie. Um, he's going to be teaching exclusively for AWAI, which I cannot wait for. But we have to wait a little bit. We're building that program as we speak. So with that, um, I don't know if you have immediate questions specifically for video. We've got more coming to help you learn. But um, at the moment, we've got these articles and um, a great presentation by Andrew Davis. So Andrew Rebecca Davis is amazing. If you can learn anything from him, like just if you have a chance to even watch a five-minute video, you learn so much. We had him speak at boot camp a couple of years ago, and he did one of the best keynotes I've ever seen in my life. Yep. <laughs> So engaging. Um, so one common question that or common theme that keeps coming up is that uh, the assumption that people would want to just say what they want to say rather than have it scripted or that they would know what they want to write rather than have someone script it for them. Can you talk about that for a minute? Sure. And I'm going to go back 800 years ago when I was writing TV <laughs> commercials. Okay. It might've been 30 years ago. I was writing TV commercials and we would say, okay, we, we have a furniture store that wants to put their um, TV commercial up and the owner of the company wants to be the star. Well, he doesn't know what to say. He has no idea what to say. You have to help him. He knows what he wants to convey, but he doesn't know how to say it, how to script it, how to produce it. So that's where we come in. Um, more recently, I've had, uh, I, I've did some work for an ad agency, a B2B firm, and they needed videos explaining um, a, a transition from old fashioned storage buildings for computer data to moving everything to the cloud. The client is too busy managing their software and all that other stuff. They don't know how to write these scripts. So they hire someone like me to write the script and make it really short, succinct, education, educational and entertaining and lead to an action lead the viewer to an action, a next step, which would, in that case, to become a qualified lead for the salespeople who are selling cloud software. So I, you can't assume that any client knows how to do video well. They, they know what they want to get across, but it's your wonderful hero mission to help them get that across in a really great way. So yeah, that's the answer to that one. 100% agree, having been on all sides of this. And then so Nicole is asking on Facebook, so she has a video background. Her background is in film. So how can I market myself to video script writing when a lot of people would prefer to wing it on their own? So she had that same assumption, mm -hmm. but do you have any tips for somebody who has a video background? Could they play that in their strengths when selling themselves? Sure. I mean, if you know about camera angles and uh, building, building suspense and um, lighting, and I mean, the whole production part is cool to have as an add-on because you already know um, kind of what goes behind that. And uh, I, I used to do video production as well, so I kind of feel really comfortable writing scripts. But you don't have to. I mean, what we're going to be developing, obviously, is everything you need to know to write scripts effectively. But if you already have that background, you'll have a little bit of an edge to start, sure. Especially in your marketing, to be able to play that up mm -hmm. in marketing yourself. And then just one last question before I take it over to Nick. Uh, Denise says, I'm assuming the client will provide you with the basic content of what they convey. And I just want to note on this, you know, this whole thing, a lot of these opportunities are collaborative. I think it's uh, when people are, are new to this world, you put that weight on your shoulders. Like the, the, the client is expecting you to bring this perfectly formed thing to them that's going to just rock the world and knock it out of the park. It doesn't work that way. At the very beginning of an experience, you want to find out why they want this video. What's the intention of this video so that you understand how to help them craft their messaging into the words that will get the job done. Most business owners know what, why they need the video, why they want the video, and they have no idea how to string the words. So you'll interview them and you'll get all of their talking points and what you'll hand back to them is a well-written script that they can use to get those points across in a clear and engaging way. Yep. And I also have actually uh, a funny adjunct to this too, is when another B2B uh, agency hired me to do some 
webinar slides for Amazon UK, of all things. I was actually writing the slides, like the ones you're seeing here, for people who are going to be doing presentations. They, they, they were salespeople. They're experts at selling, but they're not experts at writing the short talking points in a way that flows well and that sort of thing. So they just gave me a bunch of stuff and I had to go and create really succinct and, and uh, persuasively flowing slides that would drive a call to action at the end. So it, it seems funny, but video scripts and slides, uh, really, I'm going to write slides. Yep. You sure are. If you, if it's going to turn into a video presentation, you just never know. So it's pretty cool. All right, with that, I'm now going to stop my video and bring in uh, Nick to go ahead on the next part. Welcome back to the stage, Nick Osborne. <laughs> have I got? Have I got time to? When do we? How long have? I, how long have I got? Have I got time to do this? You've got time to do it. Just go. I got time. Go just, just, just go. Just go. All right. All right. Let's go straight to the next slide. What is a chatbot? So basically, it's a, I don't know whether you can see my little picture there. It's, it's, it's all happening here. It's happening on your phone. Um, and it's texting. If you use Facebook Messenger, you already know what a chatbot is. And you use that technology. You use texting to connect with your friends and family. And if you have teenage children, you realize that's what they're doing 20 hours of every day. Anyway, they're not talking to you. They're texting on their phone. They're chatting. So a chatbot is when basically that system is automated. You're still you, but you're now interacting with a company, a business, an organization. So it comes in a couple of chatbots come in different flavors. There's the AI chatbots. So that is, would be Siri for Apple or Google Assistant or Alexa or Cortana. These are the very high-end voice activated chatbots, super sophisticated. Um, not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is chatbots that are delivered principally through Facebook Messenger. So Facebook, as you probably know, is used by billions of people around the world every day. And Facebook Messenger, the texting app for, for Facebook, is also used by billions of people uh, around the world. And so thousands, millions, literally millions of companies around the world use that chatbot functionality within Facebook Messenger to talk to their prospects and to their customers so and this is like we call this nano right some people call this nano writing it's it, the nano writing is just basically saying this is short form writing and it can be three to five hundred words it can be 100 words it can be a thousand words it really varies so we'll go to the next slide and i'll just show you a quick example uh, of how this might work so you might uh be at the fletcher goods facebook page and you might be tempted or they might tempt you they might give you a link to their chat bot and there you can go in and you can interact with Fletcher Goods. You can say, you know, I'm going in there. Apparently, my name is Max. They're drawing that from my Facebook account. Uh, welcome to our store. How can we help you? This is like a welcome page, a concierge page. Uh, you know, I want to browse the store. Okay. Uh, now on the right there, once we're in the store, what do you, you know, Max, what do you want to see? Camping supplies, everyday gear, blah, blah. I want to look at camping supplies. And now I've got a bit more text. You can see it, just this very short form text. And that at the bottom there is actually a carousel. You swipe it with your finger like you do on your phone. You're basically swiping, looking at these different items. And you can either say, tell me more, or you can actually click that button and buy now. So this is extraordinary in terms of uh, a couple of things. One, if we're going to overlap with Heather on user experience, this is a super simple uh, user experience. I'm not having to get to the website. I'm not having to click through to a whole bunch of different pages. I'm just in this one channel, this one space, this one screen. I'm getting from the start point to where I want to be, which is to get this, uh, this, this camping blanket. And I do the whole thing within a minute, within a minute probably on this one device, this single screen. So yes, now let's go, let's go over to the next one. So all kinds of companies, I, like I say, the, the platform that I use, the publishing platform I use to build chatbots uh, has, that is used by over a million companies by over 200,000 digital marketing agencies. Uh, this is being used all around the world. Huge companies like Apple or Google or PayPal, but lots and lots of smaller companies, even very small companies. So the example on the right there is this is a messenger bot for chiropractors. Um, you know, so saying welcome to Cromwell Family Chiropractors and we can have images in there. We can have, sm we can have emojis in there. I can have short video clips in there. 
So it, it, in a sense, I'm, it, almost like writing this is almost like what Pam was talking about, writing short form scripts. We're writing a script here for a chatbot. And in fact, we can have video clips where we're going to be writing the script for the video clips within the chatbot. Uh, so even very small companies like this, it, it could be. So when you get started with this, it's amazing because you can literally walk down the street uh, to a coffee shop or a bicycle shop or a hairdresser or a dry cleaner or a chiropractor and say, hey, do you want me to build you a, a chatbot? Yeah, it's super accessible, super simple to get into for companies. So moving on. So why, 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 the, why is this such a big thing? Why is this such a big deal? Why is this what I am focused on 90% right now? What, what has really caught my attention here? Other than the fact that it's just crazy fun. So uh, open rates. Like if you're in the world of, of direct response with email, uh, you're writing these amazing, wonderful subject lines and wonderful from lines, and you've got built this reputation, then you'll get maybe uh, 15 to 30%. If you get a 30% open rate on an email, uh, you are doing incredibly well. Chatbot, when you get a notification on your phone, 80% open rate. Click-through rates from an email, oh, goodness, what is it? I don't know, whatever, 2%, 4%, something like that. In chatbots, click-through rates of actually doing something, completing some kind of transaction, some kind of action, uh, is closer to 20 to 30%. So the conversion rates are, are, are insane. Uh, also, I mean, companies love them because I can be a chatbot. Uh, I could be a customer service chatbot, and I could be helping uh, a thousand customers all at once. It's fantastic. And people, we, we all know we hate interacting with customer service, with real people. We hate waiting in line on, on, on telephone queues and things like that. We just don't like that. So customer service is, is really well served with chatbots as well as selling stuff, signing people up, lead generation, all kinds of things. It's 24 seven and the user experience going back to Heather is super simple and super attractive to come to people because it all happens in a single session on a single device. I'm not going from device to device. I'm not going from email to landing page to website. I'm not being thrown around all over the place. I'm just setting the pace. I'm answering, you know, I'm asking and answering the questions I want. I'm, it's like, it's like write your own adventure. All right. People ask me questions and I'm saying, Hey, I want to choose this direction. I want to do this. I'm looking for this. I want this answer. I want this product. So they, that's, this why the conversion rates are so great because the user is directing the experience and we're just writing the script to make that possible. So moving on this, you know, all of this, and it's like, it's like Pam has said, like Heather said, like, like Rebecca says, like I say, It'll, ultimately, it'll come, whatever the technology, it comes down to the words. So the, the thing that's happening right now, and we'll go straight on to the next one, is clients need writers who understand, again, it's understand the user experience, understand writing scripts, but also write this, this very particular medium. Um, because chatbots, are, the scripts currently are being written by chatbot builders. In the same way, when I started out, like in the late 1990s, websites were being written by webmasters, which was okay, but it wasn't good because webmasters are, you know, nerdy types who are really good at building websites, but they're not trained writers or copywriters. Exact same thing happening with chatbots right now. Millions of chatbots being created. 99% of them are being written by chatbot builders. These are the nerdy folks. They're doing the technical end of things and they're writing stuff that's okay, but it's not good and it's not great. So that's why this particular industry is kind of gasping for trained chatbot copywriters and conversation designers. Because as writers, we're designing the whole conversation from beginning to end. So we're going to focus on the person's need. This is kind of classic copywriting 101. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to design and write an experience that's engaging and compelling. Um, we're going to naturally steer people towards buying and buying stuff. And like I say, what part of the magic here is that in a chatbot, you take turns. I know ask a question. So this is the landscape gardener. They want people to set up an appointment or get an estimate. Um, you know, welcome. Uh, thanks for dropping by. How can we help you? I want to get a quote. I want to schedule a meeting. So because the user is directing the conversation, they feel in control and they're far more likely now to actually execute, to make a choice, to convert. Because they're not sitting there being sold at. They're saying, this is what I want. This is the way I want to move forward. This is what I'm looking for from you. Uh, so this back and forth, this conversational element is, is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So moving on to the next bit, uh, what can you earn for writing the script? Uh, and it's not just like 
two to three, you know, two thousand dollars for three hundred to five hundred words. Yes, absolutely. But you're not. It's like with anything. It's like with 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 user experience or video or whatever. It's not just sitting down to write the words. It's designing the the experience for the user. It's designing the whole chatbot flow. But yes, the, there's good money to be made. It's not a huge task in terms of sitting down to write. It's a relatively few number of words, but carefully chosen words. And people will, companies will pay good money because companies and organizations are discovering because of those high conversion rates. And because basically everyone, everyone is basically working off this device these days. There's more and more. And on this device, websites, no, people don't get a website on their phone. Social media, yes. But you know what? People spend more time in texting apps like Facebook Messenger than they do on social media. It is the number one activity. When you see people looking at one of these devices out in the wild or in your home, it's more likely than not that they are in a texting app. So companies and organizations recognize this. And also because, like I said, the results can be insanely interesting. And that, so we, we've got a university generating $3 million in additional tuition fees in a single day just because they launched a chatbot, which allowed thousands of people to interact with the university in this conversational, non-threatening way all at once. Lego, uh, you know, the Lego bricks, the toy company, reduced their ad cost by 71% because they were, convert, they were moving sales over into a chatbot environment. The chatbot was walking people through, hey, what do you want to get? How old is the child? What is their expertise? Is it their birthday? All these questions. So people feel incredibly involved when they answer the questions and they get this incredible conversion rate so they can reduce their ad costs. And now if I, if, if I have an extra moment, uh, actually, no, let's do, let, let's do, where are we? I completely lost track of my slides. Hey, do, do I have like three minutes to go live on something on yes, my screen? Okay. All right. Let me see if I can share my screen. I just want to show you. I cannot share while other participant is sharing. Somebody else has to stop sharing for me to share. All right. Here we go. This is a peek into one of my favorite tools as a chatbot copywriter. This is a prototype to prototyping tool. All right. So can you see this? The lady holding up her key yes. saying, my name is Jen. So this is where it's not the first place I go. I might write out a rough idea of my script of a, of a chatbot designed on a piece of paper or in a Word document. But when I got a rough idea, I go in here and I start building my prototype. So I'll write in, hey, welcome. My name is Jen. There's a, pic, a photo of Jen. So glad you're interested in finding a home here in Burlington. Thumbs up. Emojis. Emojis are natural through texting. It's what we do in texting. What kind of property are you looking for? All right. So I'm, I'm actually building this whole experience within uh, this prototyping tool, which is really cool. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to actually kind of make something. So, so here I am. And this is, you know, I've uploaded some photographs. I actually did this. I have a chat. I'm a co-founder of a chatbot agency. We did this demo. There was a group of realtors who just wanted a quick peek, an idea of what we could do for them. So we just put together this demo. And as you can see, the text, the writing, I, I can, let's see this little block of text here. Let's go and edit that. Uh, I can edit it. I can do, I can do a carousel like I did with the images of things. I can upload a, an image. I can upload a video clip. I can do the buttons. I can do a different type of button. There's all kinds of stuff I can do. I can add emojis down here. Here's something cool I can do. I can do, t I'm going to change the timing. So as I'm going through this conversation, I might think, hey, the reader's going to need an extra couple of seconds to think about this before I throw the next block of text. So I'm going to actually 4.5 is already quite high. So, all right, we'll go, we'll get a 5.5. I'll add an extra second there. And now I'll save that. So there's this taking turns, but I'm also, I can also set the pace. And then if I'm using this with a client, I can share this. And what I can share, I'm just now going to go to play. And I can send this to the client. I can send it to their phone and say, hey, client, this is what I have in mind. What do you think? Now, I haven't actually built, we haven't gone into the, platform, the building platform to build this bot. This is just a prototype. But I can now show the client, like me, just as a copywriter, I can use the prototyping tool. I can build what it looks like a finished bot. I can just, this is just running as video. I can also share it to him so they can actually click through all the different options. Um, so they can actually experience this as if it were the real thing. So this is, like I say, this is just like one of my favorite places as a chatbot copywriter to hang out here. Cause I, and I've done, hang on, I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna just, I, 
because I go kind of, hang on, I'm going to go into my test spots. So I was, we were just looking at the remarks. Let me look at the red pill. I just, I was just wondering the other day, uh, hey, what, what about videos? So, so I just invented the red, the red pill video. And let me just play this. I just wanted to see what would happen if I could, could I, you know, just show a short video here? Uh, I wasn't quite sure. So now we've got the red pill and I hope you've all watched the matrix. Uh, Where's the, where's the video? <laughs> so, you know, you're, like I say, you're writing scripts for the, um, for, for the conversation itself, but you also might end, end up writing scripts for a, a video clip also. So I can, I, can, I can spend forever in that tool. It is such fun to, to build and to make bots and then to share what you're doing with your client. And like I say, this is a, so in the late 90s, in like 96 to 98, 99, I was just so excited by the web because it was just exploding and it was wide open opportunity for copywriters. And I've been saying to Rebecca for a while now, while well, I've been developing this and I've been getting clients and writing, creating more and more chatbots, is I feel like we're in exactly the same space. Uh, chatbots are exploding. They're going to replace so much of, the, uh, of how people experience the online environment. It is totally dominated by the nerdy people right now, which is beautiful. They've built these amazing platforms and tools, but we desperately, the industry desperately needs trained writers and copywriters so that these scripts are better. And so these bots can work better. So just, just huge wide open opportunity right now. And yeah, we've got more stuff happening here. There's an article here. Um, we've got links and we've got also there I was in the state of the industry and I know lots of people watch that event and I got a lot of tremendous feedback from uh, from people from that event okay let's go over here so Frank was saying yesterday I was on the MGM resorts careers page looking for marketing and copywriting jobs and MGM resorts was using chatbots to chat with him so he was actually experiencing this yeah. uh Mary Kay said Nick they look like decision trees so is that kind of how you plan out your script? It is. And in fact, when, uh, uh, if we'd spent more time, if we'd had more time to spend in that prototyping tool, I could take you over. There's a, there's a, there's a tab there where it takes you into the decision tree and you can see the different routes through. So it is absolutely, this is, this is very basic. If anyone who has a background in programming, uh, this is the, if then it, it is the simplest of all programming kind of decision trees. If somebody clicks this, then take them down this pathway. If somebody says, yes, please take them this pathway. If somebody says, I'm not sure, take them down this pathway. And then sometimes those pathways will both come back into the middle again. So yes, if decision would, trees. If you wouldn't mind Nick shooting just a quick five minute screen capture, we could actually post it with the playback to have a little bit more time to show that. I think it would be beneficial because this webinar will live now on our website and people will be coming back to it. And so that way we could attach it. Even uh, Fran, when you edit this video, you could put in his tutorial at the very end of this video so that everybody has. All right, I'll just do a, yep. I'll just, I'll, I'll take a snapshot of a lot. I'll, I'll go into the uh, prototyping tool, look at a larger project with a more complex decision tree and I can, I can share how that works. That'd be awesome, thank you. Isn't it so cool how far like everything has just come? The fact that real time live, I can say, can you go ahead and do this video? We're going to post it on this and edit the video like that. And it's just such a different time. Nick and I used to do teleconferences on the phone. <laughs> like we had a whole audience of people listening to us talk on the phone. <laughs> now it's just a different, different world. Um, I'll answer this question really quick. Laurent is saying, I'm doing the first module of the copywriting program. It's all long form. Should I pause and forget about it and just focus on nano writing? Having a foundation of persuasion and really understanding who the prospect is, all of the fundamentals that we teach you, no matter what you go into, UX copywriting, video scripting, chatbots, that style that we teach you, that conversational talk, you know, write like you speak, what you're learning is going to be your foundation in everything. What I would recommend though, is if you don't have time for the sales letter component, and I'll give you a little insider secret here in a second. Just go through the program. Don't worry about the sales letter pieces. You can literally stop when you get to the sales letter piece and then move into whatever else you're hoping to do, whether it's the web, whether it's UX, whether it's chatbots, but get through those first few installments that are teaching you the fundamentals of good persuasion. Things like the four U's, the four P's, all that stuff, get through that. 
And then my insider secret, we're actually revising the accelerator program. It's going to be out in September and we're going to split it into two. One will be the fundamentals of copywriting. And the second piece will be sales letters for people who want to go on to do sales letters, but it will no longer be taught as the main focus. The reason we used to teach it that way is that sales letters are like the end all be all top of the food chain. If you can write a sales letter, it's much, we know that you can tackle these other pieces. You just have to learn how to apply it. But honestly, these days, sales letters is one opportunity of dozens and you can make just as much money as a chatbot writer, as a UX copywriter, as a video script writer. So there's so much more opportunity right now. We don't have to force you into the sales letter. So that's coming in September. Everybody who has the accelerated program will automatically get the split version coming. Yes, Nick. I just want to, I, I've got a really serious reason for people to do chatbot copywriting. This is the most fun I've had as a copywriter ever. Like, literally ever and i've and i've written everything from sales letters you know to, to print ads to radio commercials to website like social media every, i've written everything i've been doing this for 40 years i've written everything uh, but i've never had as much fun so if you like the idea of, of jumping into something new making good money and just like looking forward to every day because it's fun then uh, anyway i'm just saying excellent I never, I never had so much fun just one comment before I go to another question. Uh, Yvonne yeah. says, Nick, I've already signed up for your chatbot class and I'm very excited. I was researching domain names and see that a lot of them are taken. Just wondering if the competition is going to be very stiff or if you bought a bunch of them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have some. Uh, and, and the trouble is, is, uh, is that when something like chatbots comes along, uh, things like chatbot copywriter, chat cop. Or, or, when, I, when I was looking at domains like a year and a half ago on this, like, most of them were gone. The people buy them and they sit on them. Um, so yeah, you just have to, if you want to come up with a chatbot copywriting related domain name, you're going to have to use a little extra imagination. It's not that the competition is insane. It's not, it really isn't not for chatbot writers and copywriters. It's just that people just jump in and buy the domain name. So don't use that as a, as a kind of guide to how competitive the marketplace is. Cause that's not the case. So are chatbots used in B2B? So business to, those are your brand new B2B is business to business, a business selling to another absolutely, business. Absolutely, absolutely. Rather than consumers like you and me. Absolutely, absolutely, definitely. <laughs> I guess to take that one step further, a business doesn't read copy, right? A business doesn't sign up for the white paper or read the case study. A person does. At the end of the right. day, me, ADY company is not doing anything. Me, Rebecca Matter is the one actually reading the copy and engaging. So I 100% agree with you. B2B is going to get on board with this just as much. But let's actually talk about this. So how do you introduce this to clients? Since so many clients, this is the new frontier. How do you bring this up? How do you start this conversation? So what I, what I do, what we've been doing. So, so like I, I, I'm part, I have a partner, we have a, 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 an agent, a chatbot marketing agency. So we, we think of a group of like the one with the real estate. Uh, we were chatting and said, you know what? I know some, some guys in real estate. Uh, and basically I went away and I probably in about 45 minutes, I built that demo and we recorded that demo and we just approached these people and said, Hey, have you thought about, so I, I don't, I did, I've, I've got another demo I did for the coffee industry, which I know well, and I lo know lots of companies in the coffee business. So again, I just spent 45 minutes an hour building this short chatbot demo. And then I shared it with all these people. So I didn't go in and do this long presentation <clears throat> when i get into conversation i can start talking about the conversion rates but what i do first is i do a quick demo because it takes me very it takes very little time to do to do the prototype and and i just say hey have you thought about doing something like this and they look at it and it's like wow what's that and now that's the invitation now you've been invited to continue that conversation with the client and say well this is a chatbot here's how it works here's how it lives here's the 10 different ways you can use one here's the kind of results you can expect from that so, so I show, I show and then tell. So Nanya's saying, uh, and I'll, I'll answer this real quick, how would a chatbot help convert in B2B? The B2B function is mainly lead gen up front. So it's not that they're making a million dollar decision through a chatbot, but the chatbot is saying it's pre-qualifying basically the lead, yeah. getting information and then handing it and over it to is, the sales rep. Like, like, tr like traditionally, if it's, this is through a website, B2B is saying, download our report on seven ways to make your helicopter maintenance fees lower. All right. And so you download this thing with a chat bar. I can actually go through these questions and decision trees and I can have seven or eight different downloads available. And depending on what that person has said really interests them, 
I say, hey, would you like to get this free report? So rather than just trying to build one download to, f to fit everyone, which will work to a limited degree, I can now create a whole bunch of choices. And because this is a decision tree, I can to deliver something to someone where they think, oh my goodness, that's exactly what I want. I just asked for it and you have it. That's insane. And so you, you get this much, much better relationship right off the bat. Ooh, so many questions. Okay, let me go back over to Facebook really quick. Will the same bot conversation be sent to the potential customer if they access the website more than once? That's from Pam. It depends. Chatbots are very cunning little things because we remember, as a, ch a chatbot remembers everything. So if you went to one of my chatbots and, and then you came back, I'll say, hey, Rebecca, good to see you again. Or I might say, hey, Rebecca, I see you're back. Or if Rebecca comes back three times in a day, I might say, hey, Rebecca, you just don't seem to be able to get enough of me. So I can, I can have all these options. I can randomize the responses. But yes, absolutely. I will recognize someone coming back and I have the opportunity to let them know that I remember them. And also I'll remember the choices they made. I'll remember what they liked and didn't like and what they wanted from last time. So, so yeah, the conversation can continue based on the bot's memory of previous interactions. In fact, if you have a company with three different divisions and three different chatbots, they can all share the same database and remember, find out what that, per that person says. Hey, when you, I, I see you were chatting to the helicopter spare parts bot yesterday. And it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a real conversation. That's awesome. So Frank is saying, I see the value in nano writing. How often will this course be offered? So far, we've only contracted it once. But uh, as far as the, it just depends on how it does, like how many people sign up, how many people become certified. We look at all of those numbers to see if we do it again. But Nick is one of my if favorite. You, if, if, you don't, if you, if you I, don't sign up, we'll never get to do it again. <laughs> and is the course part of Circle of Success? Uh, Circle of Success gets the best deal at all of our live training. This is live training because it is, uh, you'll actually work with Nick over four weeks on this. So you're going to be showing up for class. You're going to be working with him in the Facebook groups. You're going to be doing assignments, getting feedback on those assignments. It's a pretty intensive four week period where Nick is all yours for that, that period of time. But you do get the best deal. So don't, if you're Circle of Success, actually go to your member page or reach out to uh, Barb and Jess, your premier liaisons, and let them work with you on signing you up. Okay, so now let's talk about the business side of this. Um, sorry. I did this one. So James, the demo tool will do the, the video for you that will be with the recording. So let's talk about like the actual business piece of it. Is there a software available to aid in using chatbots? So I write the script, like how do I work with the client that way. I hand over the script copy. What does that process look like? All right. So again, we're back into the 1990s. All right. So, <laughs> so this is like, there's, there's a chatbot is a piece of software. So it's a bit like if I go to a client and I say, Hey, I'll write your website. And they'll say, Oh, do you build websites? And usually I'm going to say, no, I'm not a website developer. I'm a copywriter. And they're going to say, oh, and maybe they have their own IT people, or maybe they might say, hey, Nick, can you, work, can you, can you find a web developer and do that for us as well? It's a little bit the same with chatbots right now. Is I'm going to step in as the conversation designer and, and, and chatbot copywriter. And I will take it right up to the prototype, which is what I just demoed for you and showed you. Beyond that, there is the building equivalent of a bot, which is like the bot equivalent of building a website, but you're building a bot. So there's separate software, separate platforms for the build. To build is a bit more nerdy. It's like putting together a building a website with WordPress or something. If you are a very nerdy copywriter, you can do that. I've built, I've built, um, I've, I've, I've built chatbots using those. You know, I, I can do it. I'm, I'm not that nerdy, but I'm a little bit nerdy, uh, so I can build a bot. Um, but one of the things that I, I've been saying to people is, I think I, I mentioned in my presentation, there are over the platform I use. There are they have as clients over two hundred thousand digital agencies that are building chatbots. That is 200,000 prospects who know how to build, but they don't have professional conversation designers and chatbot copywriters. So if I'm not a nerdy person and I don't want to get into the building side, I'm going to, I'm going to be the copywriter conversation designer. And then I'm going to reach out to those 200, a small part of those 200,000 agencies and saying, Hey guys, you guys are great at building. 
guess what I've got for you? You can focus on the building. I'm going to focus on the writing and the conversation design. Uh, so the opportunity, it's, it's early stages. This is for people who want to get really excited about this. It's absolutely out there. And I, I, think, this, I think the easiest way into this is through the agency route. Because they get it. They, know, they, they not only have the skills to do the building, they know they lack the skills to do the professional writing. Because I've spoken to these guys. Uh, and they've been like, what do you mean? What? You mean you can find writers who specifically know how to write this stuff? And I'm saying yes. And they're like, wow, wow. Because that means our, our, our bot builders can do what they really know how to do, which is build bots. And we're not asking our builders to do the writing, which is something they don't really know how to do. So big, big opportunity there. Huge opportunity. Um, and that's such a big piece of all new digital marketing channels that happen, right? SEO came on the scene and programmers were the ones who were doing the SEO. Yeah. And the operators and said, whoa, 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 hold on a second. <laughs> I can actually match the intention that you're trying to do, which is relevancy to Google to say, yes, this is the right page. But when they get there, I'll actually make the copy sound good enough for someone to want to read it. <laughs> And so it's the same thing with the chatbots. When we're working with Nick and his partner on ours, Nick is asking me those questions. Like, what are those early questions that your people are, are asking when they first call member services? What are those people who have no idea about ADY? How would you bucket them? Where are you thinking that they're going to go towards? So he's getting all that intel from us. And then he's just like with the script that we were talking about with Pam, he's getting all that insight. And then it's his job to customize and craft that experience yeah. it's, a, that. it's it's the same as like any copywriting job i'm 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 saying you know give me the brief i want the briefing document i'm going to ask these questions i want to have the brief then i know how to write and what to write so Drea is saying how does a business use your chatbot so you're not actually building the chatbot you're just writing the script but if if you were i guess working for someone who's building the bot right so you use a third-party program built to meet their needs and then they buy your service and you deliver the downloadable build and their programmers add it in how does that so let, let's say I go all the way. Let's say, let's say either I'm an agency like I am and I have a partner who's the nerdy one and we, we build the final bot. Then we basically, we basically install it into their, onto their Facebook page. So their Facebook chat, because Facebook Messenger, you know, if you go to a Facebook page, it has Facebook Messenger, the default basic vanilla chat function. Uh, basically, I'm now going to replace that with, with the chat bot. So the chat bot, first and foremost, sits on the Facebook page, but we'll also embed it if they want on their website page. All right. So that you, 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 you create it, you build it, and then you install it on Facebook and install it on the website. And then, then it runs in the background. So as a, another opportunity here is because everything is evolving. What you can do is go to a client and say, look, this is going to, you know, this build is going to cost, you know, two, two I, I know this is going to be a $5,000 bot. Like you've got a slice for writing and then maybe you find someone to help with the building, or maybe you're nerdy enough to do some building on your own. Hey, there are tons of templates out there that can do the heavy lifting for you on the build. And then you say to the client, look, here's, here, whatever it is, here's 2000, it's going to be 2000, it's going to be 5,000, whatever it's going to be. And then you say, look, plus there's a monthly fee an admin fee. So now you have this repeatable thing. Plus, you know, I'm going to charge you $500, $400, $1,000 a month to maintain it, to uh, make small changes to it, to keep it up to date. If Facebook changed stuff, then I'll make sure those changes are reflected in your bot. So you have this continuous flow of income month by month, as well as the original billing. Lots of cool opportunities. So cool. Guys, by the way, if my face starts to look like this, it's because I'm typing you responses also. I'm not like mad at what Nick says. I just caught my expression. It looked like I was angry at you. <laughs> but really, I was just so, typing. Who, who are you angry at? I don't know. <laughs> I just looked at that. Okay, so you had mentioned something about an agency. Uh, the agency route. How does the agency root in chatbot copywriting? How do you mean? I don't know. That's the question. I think you mentioned something about working with agencies. Okay, so so like I say, the the on the platform that we use to do the building, they they have as clients over two hundred thousand digital agencies that are building bots, and like I say, I can pretty much guarantee that over ninety nine percent of those agencies do not have professional chatbot copywriters working for them. The, the the scripts are being written by the bot builders, and that's not their their specialty. Uh, so I'm just saying that it is an in. That is the first place I would go. I would knock on those doors. Um, and say, look, I got a whole another professional layer for you. Um, let's get working. 
Pam, can you answer Denise's question about finding agencies? I'm going to ask you this next question, Nick, but we are almost at time. So I want to go ahead and do a last call for questions, whether about chatbots or anything else going on. I, I yeah. want to make sure that we get your answers. Just um, throwing that out there, um, because I have the slide full screen on my desktop, I can't see any questions. Oh, gotcha. He, she was, Denise was asking, how do we find those agencies? Okay. You've worked with agencies before, right? Oh my God, we have an Inside AWAI session that Jen Adams did a while back on how to get jobs with agencies and marketing firms. And it's Fran, an hour, you, it's, it's spectacular. Can you grab that link, Fran, and put it under Denise's questions so that everybody has access to that? Now, if you're looking for, if you're looking for chatbot agencies in particular, just go to your, your friendly Google page and type in chatbot marketing agency. And then, then build yourself a massive Excel spreadsheet out of those results. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. All so right. We'll the, go there. <laughs> the last question we have so right now is how much would it cost a customer to employ a chatbot? Guessing that that would play into their decision as to whether or not to use one. So what is the investment from the client themselves? Oh, it, it depends. Like, like it, you know, a, a local, you know, a hairdresser could come to me and we could, we could build a chat bot for, you know, a thousand dollars and they're done. Uh, there's another company talking to us at the moment and they just, just the documentation they sent us is making a head spin. That's probably more going to be more like a 40 to $50,000 uh, engagement. Oh. It, it's like a, it's like a beast of a, it, it, it's several bots um, all at once. And, the, and it's also a loyalty program and it's also global. Wow. Um, so somewhere probably between 40 and 60 grand on that one. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, guys, anything else? This was a fantastic session. Uh, it's just so much fun. I love the fact that, I mean, Nick, you've been in this industry even a lot longer than me. But I love that I'm so old. I'm so always old. changing, always evolving. We always have something new to talk about. This was super exciting. Pam, thank you for being here too. It's just such a... I just can't believe that there's still stuff that's this exciting to talk about <laughs> and new after all this time. It's the, I, who knew when I picked this industry that this is what it was going to be. I, know, I just right? want to thank everybody for being here on Inside the ADBI again and our Facebook friends who have joined us today. This, we love to do this. We love to have these conversations. All of our topics are always generated by you. What do you want to know from working with agencies, building a portfolio if you don't have any samples, you name it. We've probably covered it and would love to cover it again. So we have our great playbacks, dozens over on the Inside AD by page. But if you have an idea or something you want us to cover, email me at askrebecca at awai.com anytime and I will get it on the list. But we love this opportunity. We appreciate you being here and allowing us to share our enthusiasm and share what we know and really help you continue to define what your writing life is going to be like. It doesn't have to be all of this stuff. It can just be one or the other to start. And I was talking to somebody in the Q&A, if a client calls you and says, can you do this? You just say yes. And then you come to ABI and we'll help you figure it out. <laughs> so with that, everyone's saying, great. Thank you so much. So hopefully we'll see you guys in the chatbot certification. And otherwise, I'm going to call this done. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Pam. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Thank you for everyone being here. Bye, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.